Hi, it's Paul from HatterNetwork.net. Firstly, welcome to the CCNA exam troubleshooting lecture. This is the part where a lot of people seem to fall down in the exam. The main there's two reasons why why they struggle with this particular section. Or maybe I should first introdu introduce it. The troubleshooting can either be troubleshooting a network normally featuring um, the routers, so there'd be some sort of routing issue or a, a problem with the PC going through the router and out to the internet or to another part of the network. That's the first type. The second type could be some sort of VLANs or spanning tree issue. So we're going to be concentrating on the first part which is network troubleshooting. And uh, So the reason why a lot of people have struggle, struggled with the troubleshooting side of things is that um, I've just realised I've <laughs> spelled troubleshooting wrong but uh, I'll Goes to show him how many human. So the, the first reason, uh, first reason why people um, struggle is they panic. They look at a network, and I'll bring up the network topology here, and um, they just start to panic. It they become overwhelmed, think it's too many devices to look at, and they don't even know where to start. Which brings us on to the second reason why people uh, struggle in the exam. So I'll just I'll just put this down. Three. They're overwhelmed, or number two, and this is the the biggest one. Now, strategy. What they'll start doing is, if say this PC can't get out to the internet for whatever reason, they'll start randomly doing pings, and then they'll go over here maybe and do a show version, and then they'll go over here and do a show IP route and really they're just wasting a lot of time and okay so if you can't ping from here to say here why are you issuing that command if it isn't part of your strategy then really the information you can't actually use it to build up a picture of what's going on so what we're going to be looking at I'll just clear that off is uh, a troubleshooting outline what, we, what we're going to be doing using the OSI to troubleshoot so this is going to be our our strategy or our troubleshooting blueprint uh, you probably wondered why you learned the OSI after all of that and now you found out why and using some of the show commands so troubleshooting outline again let's go back to our network so in the exam you've clicked on next and basically you've seen this topology now it doesn't really matter if it's two routers, three routers, or twenty routers. It's all the same stuff, really. The same commands and the same process. Obviously, if it's a bigger network, it may it may take a little bit longer, but often it doesn't if you do it properly. I've got some videos on how to network on the lab section on troubleshooting, and somebody wrote me an email saying, you know, in the exam they had five routers, and in in my troubleshooting I only use three. Well that doesn't really make sense to me because the commands are all exactly the same it's like um, engines a really big engine in a car will work the same as a smaller engine you've just got bigger pistons and more cubic capacity to let more fuel in alright so I'm just going to get a little scratch pad open here and make a few notes the first thing is you're going to want um, to review the network all right so basically this involves looking at um, look at the topology so which devices are where and what they're doing look at the protocol oh, the routing protocol being used so for the CCNA it's going to be RIT version 2 EIGRP or OSPF and as you've learned about these different protocols each of them have different features they do different things automatically some will auto summarize some won't some you'll need to add wildcard mass and some you won't and so it's down to you to have read the theory um, so you can actually see what it should and shouldn't be doing because if you're going into EIGRP and trying to add OSPF wildcard masks then you might be barking up the wrong tree so if you look at the topology, the protocol and then
you initiate your plan. Now your plan I recommend, as I've mentioned in the other slide, you use the OSI model. So you're looking at layers. So layer one, you shouldn't really get physical problems because normally that means a cable is either broken or not not actually plugged in, and you, because it's a a router emulator, that won't um, be the case. But I'll include in physical um, nothing passing across the interface. So interfaces that oops. I know shitted for example. Some people would argue and say it's layer two, but as long as you're using a layered approach. So layer two is there a clock rate? If there's no clock rate on the DCE cable, then no traffic will pass. This is for serial interfaces obviously. Layer three, we're looking for Oh, sorry, layer two as well. Encapsulation, I'll put encap for short. Both sides of a wide area network interface should have the same encapsulation if they're going to communicate. So if we go back to our network here, it's perfectly permissible to have HDLC here, sorry, HDLC and PPP here. That's fine. What you can't have is HDLC on this side and then PPP on this side. That won't work because it's like a Japanese person trying to speak to a French person in Japanese. It just won't work. Alright, so we go back to our slide again. So one, review the network, two, initiate the plan, and then we start using our OSI model. So physical, are the interfaces no, um, no shutted, layer two, clock rate, DCE, encapsulation. And we go to layer three now, we're looking at, is the correct IP address on the interface? And subnet mask, it can be easy just to hit the wrong key, hit the wrong um, number when you're doing the subnet mask especially if it's been configured by human beings there's a good chance there's a mistake on there somewhere it's just people people do that sort of thing so um, routing entries has the correct um, network been advertised uh, more advanced stuff tends to be um, configuring uh, the delays on the interface, for example. You could be sending out updates at a certain interval for one side of an ERGRP network, but if it doesn't match the other side, then um, it won't form a neighbor relationship. But really, I'd be surprised if they put that sort of thing on there, to be honest. So um, hopefully this looks fairly simple. Um, what we want to do now is sort of look at... Uh, the show commands so it's this is our tool bag of what we're going to actually enter onto the routers to um to begin the troubleshooting process 